Foley, Alabama, and preached on Be Filled with the Holy Ghost. And I tell you, when he got through preaching, I wanted to get the Holy Ghost all over again. <laughs> I went down to the altar, and I was down there with him praying uh, because uh, conviction was in that message. And uh, we appreciated that. I'm glad to be there with the folks at the Church of God. And uh, we certainly enjoyed the fellowship. Um, I'm going to move quickly into the Word for a few minutes. I'm not going to take the night. So you brethren back of me and around me, I think I've taught you what to do. Following uh, a man of God's exhortation uh, to the church. And uh, my pastor taught me, never let my words fall to the ground. That was his teaching, and I received it, and I never did. Uh, in the years I was with Brother Jim Roberts in his work here. And so I'm going to take an Occupy uh, just a few moments. I'm going back to a study that I started you in Wednesday night on leaven and the influence of leaven in the church. And I hope you brought your Bible, unless you know your Bible so well that you can... Uh, um, someone told me one time, I said, I, I, I didn't mean to get them, but I did. Um, uh, they said, uh, I said, did you bring your Bible to church? And they said, oh, I have my Bible up here. I said, well then, quote me the first verse of the first chapter of the book of Isaiah. They said, no, I, I don't remember it. I can't, I, I've never learned it. I said, well, you said you had your Bible up here. I, I said, uh, so if you didn't bring your Bible, you must have it all up here. Uh, because uh, we are going to be, uh, and I encourage, I, I want to emphasize this. I want to emphasize it. There are some things I like to emphasize in the church right now. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more emphatic, in fact, if you'll notice, in some of my ministry than I have been the last few years. Um, I don't want to end my ministry like a whimpering pup going out in the night. I don't want to end my ministry on a note of regret, remorse, or retreat. I don't want to end my ministry uh, thinking that the gospel has lost its power, its luster, or its captivity Amen. of the Spirit. Amen. I want the gospel to be as powerful Fresh. when I preach it as it was uh, when I was in Clueston, Florida, when I was 17 years old, preaching down there uh, to your mother and your grandmother uh, many years ago. I don't want the church, I've never wanted to see the church be like the little cowardly, whimpering uh, animal of some sort, slinking out into the night. I'd like to see the church start the service with praise and end it with an altar service. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I said, let me get more reaction from that. I said, I'd like to see the service open with a praise and end with an altar service. Praise the name of the Lord. How many believe the gospel ought to be convincing, convicting, and converting? Yes. Amen. Yes. And even sometimes condemning. Yes. Praise yes. the name of the Lord. Somebody said, oh, I don't go to church to be condemned. Then you're, you're wrong. Because every now and then the gospel ought to condemn you. It ought to sharpen its wits so that the gospel uh, accentuates some weakness or some area in your life that may need attention. Yes. And so, then it, it convinces you, it convicts you, it converts you, it condemns you. And you're saved. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. I say you're saved. Yes. So, in the book of Luke, in the 13th chapter, I want to start this, uh, and as I said, uh, let me see, I'll, well, I didn't bring it, so I can't watch it. Uh, I forgot my watch, so I'll, I'll look around every now and then and check where the time it is by the Spirit. Uh, in Luke 13 uh, and um, 20, um, uh, let's go there to start with, because I mentioned this Wednesday night, and I'd like to emphasize it again. And let's pray that God will bless the Word. If you've got your Bibles, hold it up and say, Lord, 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 bless the Word. Bless the Word. Bless Brother Marlow. Help his throat. Help his inspiration. Help him to be anointed of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory. Glory. I believe. Glory. I 
Bible said in Luke 13 and 20, Glory to God. the Bible said, and again he said, Jesus, whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Won't go on that very long because I did Wednesday night. I said the woman is the church. Always in the Bible, man is never likened to the church. Woman is. Because woman is a life giver. Woman is a life carrier. And woman possesses the womb where life is nourished, developed, and gives birth. Man is only the seed bearer. So therefore the church is the womb and God uses ministry fivefold to bear seed of his word in that womb yes. of that woman. But here we've got a problem. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven, this woman did something deceitful, dishonest, and wrong. This church took leaven, and leaven is um, a salted mixture of of a yeast mixture that could not be put in any bread that was baked for the tabernacle. The bread had to be unleavened. The manna was unleavened that Israel ate. It was without influence of anything else. Um, it was showing us that God's word is not leavened because leaven is likened unto false teaching, false doctrine. In the 16th chapter of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And they thought it was because they had not taken bread, but later they understood that he was talking about the teaching and tradition of the Pharisee church because it was false and wrong. And Jesus said, That's leaven. And he said, you beware of that. And here the woman takes something that's wrong. An influence that should not be in meal. And in the Old Testament, remember that when the prophets, the sons of the prophets went out to gather vines, um, some of them being young, inexperienced, and not knowledgeable, they gathered wild gourds, or wild vines, and they put them in the pot where they were brewing up a soup for Israel to eat. And someone detected it in the Old Testament. You'll find this picture. And they said, man of God, and Elijah was there. They said, man of God, man of God, there's poison in the pot. Thank God somebody has their senses exercised to discern both good and evil, and someone can tell when somebody is gathering the wrong mixture and putting it into worship or into praise. I can tell when we veer from God's Spirit in this church in one moment. One song, in the middle of the song, in the last part of the song, one part of music, one part of anything we're doing here. Any activity, I can tell. The moment I walk through those doors till I'm here, I can detect when there is a wrong spirit, a wrong attitude, or when there is something going on in teaching, preaching, doctrine that is poison. And that it is diluting uh, the purity of worship. How many believe that worship ought to be pure? Yes. Do you believe that worship ought to be pure? Yes. I say, do you believe that God's Spirit is pure and should never be adulterated with anything but God's Spirit? Amen. 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 Because when God's Spirit is in the church, people are healed. You can command devils to be subject when God's Spirit is there. You can say it in the name of Jesus, cancer, be healed when Jesus and his presence is there. So Jesus said that this woman took and put it in meal, and meal is the word of God. And there were three measures of this meal, and I said Wednesday night, 
One of those measures was from approximately 33 A.D. till 70 A.D., about 37 years, and that was leavened. That phase of that measure of the Word of God, the meal, was influenced by teaching of Hymenius, Philetus, Alexander the coppersmith, Diotrephes, and uh, did you know that the church has ever to be on the guard about false doctrine, false teaching, uh, wrong spirit, wrong attitude, uh, uh, departing from holiness, departing from sanctification, because it will adulterate that church. And the church will become a charismatic, cosmetic church rather than a holiness, righteousness church where people are in the body of Christ with Christ being the head and the right order, divine order in that church to where that truth is outweighed uh, barley becomes predominant in place of wheat. And tares are greater than wheat because the influence of leaven, and leaven can be many things. Leaven can be false teaching. Leaven can be letting down standards of holiness in the church, righteousness in the church, to where people are slipping and sliding around on the outside and doing things that's uh, creating havoc and mimicking God and uh, causing uh, the church to be discussed in the city as a letting down its uh, righteousness of God and its holiness of God and the truth that it preaches, that can all be adulterated. And by 70 AD, there was no early church anymore. There was no white horse anymore. Um, and then, of course, martyrdom followed and then blackness and then death to the church. That was a major meal. Now let's get the second measure. The second measure that the woman adulterated leaven in the major meal was from 70 A.D. to 1520 A.D. The Dark Age period of the church, the apostate period of the church, to where the church became known as the universal church by another name. I'm not calling that name, lest I, I would like to be tender right here and not offend anyone, but it became known as the universal church. Instead of Christ being the head uh, in heaven, there was a head in Rome. There was a head in a place called the Vatican. And uh, uh, that, that darkness uh, filled that church because that woman took the second major a meal, the Word of God, and dumped all the influence of false teaching, wrong standards, sin, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, ungodliness, the wrong spirit, the wrong water, into that church. Until then, there was only one measure of meal left for leaven to be added. And leaven has been added since 1520, through all the reformation of the church, through all the move of God in the church, through all the reformers of the church, there's still wrong influence and false teaching and wrong attitude and wrong spirit that is still leavening the church or leveling the church to where the church now has a third measure of meal and the whole now is leaven from the early church till now. That's why we're working with leaven in the church. That's why that there must be a ministry strong, courageous, anointed, and then there must be divine order around him and there must be an army of the Lord and then there must be five full ministers. And there must be anointed preaching. And anointed teaching. And then there must be anointed people. You know something?